What's going on guys? Let's get some first impressions on this GEC uh, Scout. This is D73. Um, this is not my knife. I'm shipping it overseas to a friend of mine and uh, wanted to let you guys see it first. I um, had a friend, my cousin, actually look at this and he was really impressed with it. So I figured I'd show it off to you guys. I had a Scout long ago. Uh, GEC, I believe they first come out around 96 or so. Was that right? I think so. Was it 96? No, 2006. 2006. I think. I believe it's 2006. Anyways, when GEC first started hitting the scene, um, people loved them because they were made in the very old style and on some of the old tooling that the queens were. And then, of course, Bill Howard with his queen background um, was just putting out some incredibly well done pieces especially for a company that was just starting out and this was one of the first models i believe i know i had one real early like within the first two years of them producing knives for some reason or another i sold it or traded it off or give it to a friend of mine um, i believe he still has it rolling around in his toolbox somewhere um, but anyways they had super strong back springs like pull weight on most gcs back in the day if you think 10 bean bust your nail every time you opened it, these, uh, most of their knives were sitting, gosh, at least an eight and a half. Some were tens. Like you couldn't pull them out and that was the big complaint. And since then, so many people, you know, have said, hey, we love your stout back springs, but maybe you could just loosen them up a little bit. And then they started going to, eh, most of their knives can ride around six to seven some of their workhorse knives, they ride around seven and a half or eight, you know, depending on what use you have. This uh, is a very tight um, pull, but this is their user bullnose sodbuster. This is the working man's knife from the farm farm and field series. So, anyways, this scout, a long way around saying, has a lighter back spring than mine had. And I think it's a change for the better. This is brand new. Shipped directly to me before I ship it out overseas. You would not believe what some of these companies want to ship a knife overseas. It's more than the knife is. So. Sometimes I help folks when I can. A lot of times I do. I've done this a lot. So let's get a look at it. This you can pinch open. But you can also use the nail nick for it pull it out this is a pretty stout back spring but I would say around a seven seven and a half definitely not a nail breaker this is the tidy Ute version meaning that it's not dressed up there's no um, I want to say billboarding but what is that stamping etching on the blade no branding on the blade just a workhorse knife satin Again, I think uh, just a beautiful, beautiful working knife here. You've got your, what looks like paper micarta. Did the tube say what it was? Oh, linen. Linen micarta, not paper micarta. And if I remember right, this was linen micarta as well on my talon. And you can see I've carried and used this a ton. It has soaked up a lot of hand oils and stuff. And this, I would suspect, in about a year will darken up like this. This was linen micarta too, green. So it just gets more and more rich. I believe it gets more and more beautiful. It's beautiful like this, but as you put some patina on it, carry it and use it, it's gonna darken up like that. So, Scout, the Model 73. Uh, you can find them in two blade versions, the single blade like this, which is what I prefer, single blade, very nice drop point on the tidy you you're still getting a swedge can you see it there so the blade looks very nice and finished you're getting 1095 blade steel okay this is a little bit of an older design so this doesn't match up perfectly flush not a big deal but most of GEC's newer designs match up completely flush right there
this was one of their earlier designs too so you can see that's not absolutely perfect either but you can't expect that for the price point this knife comes in right around eighty dollars or so you can get them all dressed up you can get the uh, the Northfield versions and you can get like stag on the bottom half and of course the Northfields have the Northfield uh, etching on the blade I think they even have the deeper cut swedge on some of them um, but you're still getting the 1095 or you can get the workhorse I love the workhorse tidy utes like this I love their satin finish I love the handle materials I love that mostly they're single blades they don't always have to be but some of their workhorses are single blades I love the micarta I can drop this on the ground I can just use this without any fear of anything they're cheap enough to actually let them build their own patina if you're into that sort of thing not everybody is right you can see how my patina is building on my talon here you got some rainbow colors going and depending on what I cut um, and what you guys cut obviously you know if you've got the GC's 1095 will change so one time it might be dark like this you might cut an orange and you'll get more rainbow patterns back on there and just over time it will darken up and darken up but it still changes it depends on if you like that sort of thing or not I think it's gorgeous showing that the tools being used and the life of the tool you can see that they do get depending on how well you take care of them this has seen a lot of use a lot of hundred degree days in my pocket in use so I got some patina going on my back spring there my brass has darkened up a little bit um, my hot dog shield has taken on some patina as well and I'm showing you that because this knife will probably look like that after a bunch of use and I like that so there you go it's very impressive though I really like this design they call it the Scout it's the model number 73 I believe they make the larger version of this I forget what model that is but I like how this tang rolls up into this so there's no awkward well I don't really have one here to show you some slip joints get a little funny right here but this rolls right up into it much like this talon right so they're comfortable to use your finger all the way up to the start of that cutting edge this is the same how it feels in hand your first two fingers hit right here and then your other two come on the back side of this the handle is a little wider in the rear than it is in the front which makes it feel very secure especially when you're doing like a slicing cut where you're pulling on the knife and you're pulling downwards pressure on the knife right it like secures up in your hand more there's no hot spots this is nice and round the whole handle is nicely contoured you see how nice and shiny that back spring is but GC's most of them especially these tidy ute versions um, that is also 1095 so it's going to patina much like the blade will and it'll match it all the way down you know again some are gonna love it some are not going to be as excited as I am about the patina that also means you might want to keep the inside oiled otherwise you're gonna get some spotting in there and I could probably clean that up you know wipe it down in there put some Neverdoll in there do some scrubbing clean it up but I don't mind that at all you see they ship very nicely finished on the inside you can see how they're hand done knives if you guys haven't check out my friend the Apostle P and he took a tour did like a five part series or maybe even more uh, incredibly well done thank you for that uh, I think I speak for a lot of us guys um, you know just to see the process that goes behind a knife like this a pretty much hand finished a knife a hand assembled knife uh, yes the blade and everything's like stamped out all the parts so it's not like a custom knife but it's all assembled through a bunch of people who really know their craft. Your pins are all made flush by a real person, not somebody in China. This is a hand done knife. This passed the inspection of several people before it left the shop. You can see the contouring there, all done by hand for the most part. 
you can see how it's not absolutely perfect. This side's a little bit thinner than this side. It's character. You know, some people, again, are not going to like that. Some people are going to be okay. To me, there's so much character in these knives. You know that they're hand done. They're still incredibly well finished, especially when you consider, I think I paid 65 for this, 80, gosh, even 100 though, with the amount of handwork that goes into these knives. You know, it's nice. They're fun to use. They cut incredibly well. I'd like to make another video on that. You know, we buy knives for a lot of different reasons, but I love when I have a knife in my collection or that I get to carry and use or review. I love when I get to use them and they perform incredibly well. And I also love the way they look, right? And I love the vibe that the knife puts out. You know, this has a nice home timey, cutting a pork chop on your dinner table, maybe even field dressing a deer is probably not the best knife for that, no. Or, or scanning a fish, you know, or something like that. But for EDC, stuff like that, there's something about a traditional knife. I'll always like it. I think they'll always be in style. I think every knife nut should have a couple of them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe they're just not for you. But to me, it's like a homey feel, you know? And they cut incredibly well. The thin blades, most of them are very thin. Most of them are full flat grounds. Most of them have a nice grip on them. They feel great. Most of them do not have pocket clips, so there's nothing digging into your hand. You know? There's just something about it. Most of them are 1095 or some sort of carbon steel. Not all, but most are carbon steel that are going to take on a patina and grow and change and get old with use. You know? And, and there's something about that. It's not tangible. You know, it's not for everybody but it's certainly something to it. Putting these up for some size comparisons for you. Here is a Victoria Knox Cadet. Most people have that knife, right? This would be a great slip joint. I would suggest this knife to anybody watching this video. If you're still hanging around after 12 minutes, you'd probably like it. That's all I can say. Or you really like to hear me go on and on. If you do, I appreciate it. So there it is next to your sway back. I just figure a lot of people who watch this channel, who will watch this video, at least have one of these knives. Maybe this will be your first traditional knife. Let's put it next to a, a Delica for you. Not to get off on a rant, but modern day traditional? Uh, maybe. Certainly a classic design. Certainly a thin, full flat ground blade character in it handmade no but performance yes yes i'll do a video on that knives with incredible performance and that's what a lot of slip joints will bring to you the thin blades again i just can't stress it how well uh 1095 and most carbon steels will take an edge they're a true pleasure pleasure to sharpen true pleasure to touch up to carry and use to cut anything with you know when you don't have hundreds of dollars dumped into it you will cut most anything with them so what you cut your pork chop on the plate and it touched the ceramic plate you got a little ding in your edge you know what on your sharp maker or whatever process you're using to sharpen your knife a couple swipes and a couple things on your strop and your 1095 is back screaming sharp there's something to that. There's something about the freedom to a knife that you will just use it for anything. You know? And not that slip joints all feel that way, but I'm talking this knife, being that it's this linen micarta, being that the price point is under 100 bucks, you know, it's something you're going to have on you, probably. You'll have it tucked in your um, coin pocket. You know, maybe have your Sabenza 25 clipped and you'll have this in your pocket and you'll find uses for both. I do. You know, I'm a little bit nutty, but there's a lot of us out there. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're a lot like me. I'm a lot like you. We're carrying multiple knives for multiple reasons. Pocket jewelry, yes. 
tool, yes. Conversation piece, yes. Art, yes. Sculptures that move and that are useful, useful sculptures, yeah. You get it. Let's get a look at that linen micarta. I think it's crazy how much they darken up. We're going to get out of here, guys. I have rambled on and on. I truly do enjoy making these videos. It's nice to carve out some time and cut loose with you guys and just geek out for a little bit. I've got a bunch of knives I'm trying to finish up. More anodizing work. Um, but I, I like to return to my roots sometimes and do these incredibly in-depth videos. Maybe tangent laced videos and, and just go on and on about nothing really. But you get it. I love how most slip joints are contoured. Most of them are not perfect. They have evidence that they were hand done by somebody who really uh, knows what they're doing. Usually, not all, are made within the United States. A lot of these knives are being made on the same machines that they made the knives way, way back in the day. The jigging is usually pretty unique to the knife. You know, there's something about all that. That's it. That is the GEC Scout slip joint traditional knife. I think it'd make a great first traditional knife if you're slightly interested. Um, the GEC Scout. It's a great size. You can get a full four finger grip on here. Um, has a nice drop point style blade has a little bit of belly here for you has a flat ground blade i i highly always <laughs> boy that didn't come out right did it <laughs> i always highly suggest the talon for one of your if you only have like five slip joints i would highly suggest this one um but not a lot of people or not everybody digs the warren clough blade as much as i do the straight blade I, I really, really dig it. Um, and some people like more of a traditional style blade shape. Not that the Warren Clef is not traditional. It certainly is. But more of the conventional, you know, blade. I like them both. So I will be picking up a 73 after seeing my friends here. I got to get this in the mail to them. So. That's it. Check out that satin finish that GEC does on their tidy utes. And then, of course, you know it's gorgeous, and then it'll just go away with the patina. Or you could keep some um, protectant on there. You know, make sure it's food safe if you're going to cut food. Uh, food safe oil that I like is mineral oil. And I know it sounds crazy. Where do you find mineral oil? You can find it in any, any drugstore, any usually big box store, Walmart. <clears throat> we hate going there, but... And where do you find it? You find it in the laxative section. I know. But it's a great oil. You can even oil your pivot with it if you want to. Um, it's a great protectant. It's what I protect my acid stone washing with. You know, what I darken it back up with. And it's food safe. So, you know, I have kids. Chances are you might have a child or two. And you might cut an apple or two, maybe for yourself. Maybe you want to keep that option open wipe some mineral oil on here when you cut your fruit maybe you don't want that patina on there just rinse it off just rinse just the blade off wash it with soap and water you know maybe keep a hanky with a little bit of uh your protectant of choice on there i like mineral oil for food safe stuff and just put a light coat on there and it'll stay nice and satin like that that's it guys i know another 20 minutes I truly enjoy the longer videos. I enjoy just getting everything off my mind. I hate for nothing more than to turn the camera off after even say a five minute video and go, shoot, I didn't mention that. I didn't mention that. Did I capture the essence of that knife? Maybe the motivation why I bought the knife or maybe the motivation why you might want to buy the knife. Did I really cover why that knife was worth $1,600 or, or $500 or $160 or $70. Did I really capture that? You know, and to me, it just takes sometimes 20 minutes, you know. But I figure you got a fast forward button, or you can just turn it off. 
you know? It's just me. Just having fun. Not trying to save the world, just having a little bit of fun. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. That's the GC73. Again, love GC's packaging here, the tube. Love it. Their wax paper that they ship in. Good, good stuff. Have a good day. See ya.